Welcome to Horus Software Tutorials. In this session, we will discuss the basics of the Horus Processing Software. This session has six topics. 1. The user interface components. 2. Specifying a raw data file for the rover. 3. Examining the rover process data. 4. Work around the start and end date or time. 5. Viewing the solution. And finally, 6. Viewing the trajectory events. First, let us invoke Horus. Go to the Windows File Browser and locate where the Horus.exe file is. Double-click Horus.exe. The main window of the Horus software will pop up. Now let us go through the topics of this session. The user interface components. The main window has six sections. From top to bottom, these are the date and time panel on the very top of the main window, the rover panel, the base panel, and the solution panel. The control and display unit, or CDU, at the very bottom has the control buttons and the display areas. At the very bottom of the CDU is the status bar. The status bar shows hints or instantaneous help as you hover the mouse over an object. For example, as the mouse hovers over the rover panel, it displays a hint about specifying the rover information. The sixth and last section is for specifying the processing options and is to the right of the main window. The next topic is specifying a raw data file for the rover. There are two me methods for this. One, drag the file from the file browser and drop it over the rover OBS text box as shown. Two, click the ellipses button to the right of the rover OBS text box and browse to the location of the required file when an open dialog pops up. Click the required file and then click the open button. As you have seen, in either case, the Rover OBS text box was filled with a file name and its path. You can edit the contact of the text box if needed. Here are some notes to consider. The solution text box was filled automatically based on the Rover text box. You can manually edit the contacts of the solution text box and change it but it is highly recommended that you keep the name and path as is for project file consistency. At this time, you can also edit the antenna height text box and enter the value of the rover antenna height above the surveyed points, usually a pole height, say 1.5 meters. You can also specify the rover antenna type by clicking the antenna type menu and selecting the proper entry. In the case the antenna type is not listed or unknown, choose None. You can specify Rhinex header information by clicking on the Rhinex button below the rover check. The Rhinex window will pop up. All fields in this window are text and editable. Click the OK button when you are done specifying the header information. You can also specify start and end time and how the processing interval in the time date panel. 
However, it is not recommended that you specify the times the first time you run the raw data file to allow Horus to extract all recorded data in the file. We will come back to adjusting processing times later. In the options panel to the right, you can specify the position mode. The default value is kinematic. Leave as is for the first time processing a file, even if the file was acquired in static positioning mode. This will allow for better checking on blunders. Now we can process the contents of the raw data file. Hit the run button in the CDU. You will notice that the button has changed to abort, to abort the process if needed. Let us not do that. Watch the message panel as it displays what Horace is doing in the background, like generating Rhinex for the rover, reading OBS, processing, and finally done. Have you noticed the progress bar between the CDU and the status bar as it advances? Now we'll examine the rover process data. It's time to have a look at the acquired data that Horus has just processed. Horus provides two views of the data, textual and graphical. The textual view. Click on the square button above the Rover OBS text box. A text editor opens up to show the content of the extracted Rhinex file of the raw data file. You will notice the header information that you have specified in the previous step. The rest of the file is range data between the Rover and the GNSS satellites. This view is for read only i.e. you cannot change its content. 2. The graphical view. Click on the round button above the OBS text box. A graphical plotting area will pop up. The area can be filled with several plots, as we will see. Horus reads information in the process data files. The first plot will be for satellite visibility. You see the x-axis showing the observational GPS time, where the y-axis shows different tracked satellites, G for GPS, and R for GLONASS. A dot means visible or tracked, while a space or gap means that the satellite was not visible at the specified time. You can change the plot view by clicking the selection drop-down menu in the toolbar. The second plot is for sky plot. This shows the path of the satellites along with their azimuths and elevations. The third choice is DOP, number SBs, SNR. Click it to see the satellite receiver geometry of the acquired data, and so on. around the start and end date or time. Let us now examine the date or time info of the process data file. This will be in the date time panel. You will notice a get button by the checkbox of the start and end times. Let us now click on the get button of the start time. Have you noticed the change in the start date and time fields? These are the start date and time read from the processed file. Let us repeat this for the same date and end time. Watch the end date and time fields. These are the end date and time read from the process data file. You can now click the get button by the duration label. The duration date and time period fields will be filled. Horus calculates the duration based on the specified start and end date and time. Now you change the start and or end date or time. But first, you have to check the box by corresponding item. For example, to change the start date and or time, click the mouse in the corresponding field, say the start minutes, and either type in a new value, or use the speed button to scroll up and down to change the value. The same applies to the rest of the field. You can also change the interval field by choosing another processing interval from the drop-down menu. 
Note, you may not choose an interval that is shorter than the actual acquired data interval. If you accidentally did so, Horace will use the acquired data interval. But you can always choose an interval that is longer than the acquired data interval. Say you choose 5 seconds processing interval for a 1 second data set. After you have changed the start and or end data time, click the Get button to update the newly specified start, end, date, and or time. You may now want to reprocess the raw data file based on the new starter, end, date, and time. Horace will warn you that the processed files already exist and whether you allow them to be overwritten. If you chose to reprocess the data according to the newly defined start and or end date and time, you may want to re-examine the rover data and make sure it reflects the date and time range you want. You can do so by the repeating the procedures in this step. Viewing the solution. Let us have a look at the solution, but before we go that far, let us have a look at the data folder. To do so, let us go back to the Windows file browser. We started with just one file, the raw data file. Now, the folder has processed files produced by Horace. You may not want to delete any of these files, as Horace uses them for processing and viewing purposes. For example, the file with the extension .pos contains the solution trajectory of the rover. To see a textular view, i.e. a tabular view, click on the square button on top of the solution text box. A text viewer pops up where the trajectory is listed in a tabular form. The line with a percentage mark at the beginning constitutes the header and are considered comments. Each line in the table is a record of an observation epoch. Its unique identifier is the date and time at which the epoch was observed. Then it is followed by the rover location at that epoch in the form of latitude and longitude in the defined datum and a and height above the ellipsoid or geoid as specified in the header. Then comes quality factor, number of satellites tracked, and standard deviations of the calculated location. The last two comments of the table only apply to baseline processing. This will be covered later. Let us close the text viewer for now. Some notes. You should have the same number of records as the number of epochs calculated in the duration field. There are situations where this may not be the case. For example, if you have satellite slips or data gaps, as the rover goes under a pass for example, the actual number of records will be smaller than the calculated duration epochs. The graphical view shows a plot of the trajectory. To go there, click on the round button above the solution text box. The graphical viewer will pop up. It will show a graphical plot of the rover locations derived from the .pos file. The plot starts in static mode. You can, however, animate it to view the trajectory progress in time as you have surveyed it. To do so, click on the track button in the toolbar. Then, click on the scroll button in the toolbar to play the trajectory as it advances in time. You can pause, stop, or rewind as needed. You can also display trajectory statistics on the plot. To do so, click on the settings button that looks like a gear symbol on the far right of the toolbar. Switch the show statistics button to the on option, then click OK. Statistics will show up on the top right of the plot screen, like the average location, the standard deviations, and the root mean squared errors. Horace provides other views of the solution. Click the drop-down menu and choose the position item 
to view the trajectory in the form of individual locations, for example, north, south, east, west, and up, down. You can do the same thing for velocities, accelerations, etc. We will come back to these plots later to see how we can use them in our solution evaluation. And finally, viewing the trajectory events. The last topic of this tutorial is to view the trajectory events. Not every survey has events. Events are stored in the raw data file when you use the EVT marker during the survey. If you have not required events, you can skip this topic. Horus provides textual and graphical views of the events in the same manner as the solution trajectory. To see the events text, click on the square button next to the round graphical view, but this time to its left. A text window will pop up to show the event's trajectory in the same tabular form as of the overall solution trajectory. This is the EVT records interpolated from the trajectory. A simple linear interpolation is used. The statistics were also calculated based on the original trajectory at the event times. Have a look around the page and then close the viewer. To see the events on the plot, Click on the round graphical view button in the main window to invoke the plot viewer. The trajectory will show up on a plot. Click the waypoint slash path button on the toolbar. All events will show up on the trajectory along with their marker names. Note, in case no events were acquired, nothing will show up in the text view or in the graphical view. In the plot window, you can zoom in and out by scrolling the mouse wheel, and pan by holding the mouse left button and dragging the page around. You can also use the toolbar button to center the view, clear it, zoom to predefined settings, etc. Explore the plot view by clicking around. That brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thank you for watching.